you are welcome, brothers and sisters, to this final day of the special program on the redeemed of the Lord. So we want to go straight into today's program, and it is to bring together all that we have learned uh, in this special program, the redeemed of the Lord, the redeemed of the Lord. Let's start by looking at our text again, which is Isaiah chapter 35, verse 10. Isaiah 35, verse 10. I let this scripture ring through your heart for the rest of your life as the redeemed of the Lord. And the redeemed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with joyful shouting and everlasting joy will be on their heads. Hallelujah. Every time I get there, I get excited. Oh, how beautiful it is for a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, somebody to carry everlasting joy upon his or her head. That means that person is always full of joy. Your head shall carry joy. I say your head shall carry joy. In the mighty name of Jesus, they will obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Of course, anybody who is carrying joy on his head like I am carrying, hallelujah, sadness, long face, sorrow, disappointment, sighing mm, must flee away. I say it must flee away. They must fly away. In the mighty name of Jesus. So why don't you join me and let us take that text again and read it together or just repeat after me. And the redeemed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with joyful shouting and everlasting joy will be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing will flee away in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In fact, I feel right away because today is ministration. I feel right away to minister that message to somebody. Why don't you just join me and put your two hands on your head and say, in the name of Jesus, I am the redeemed of the Lord. And by the redemption power of God, I carry everlasting joy upon my head. Every sorrow, every sign, every disappointment in my life fly away. Go now, 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 in the name of Jesus. But all the days of my life, from now on, for the rest of my life, I carry the joy of God. I carry the gladness of God upon my head. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be unto you and your family. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The objective of this study is to make known clear to everyone who cares and for us here, the power and the provisions of God available to the redeemed of the Lord. So that, number one, those of us who are the redeemed of the Lord will no longer walk in ignorance, in defeat, but will enjoy the provisions of God for the rest of our lives. Number two, those who are still playing with God's provision for their lives will also know and understand, and it will be their choice. And I plead that everyone who hears this message will come to Jesus Christ, the one whom God has appointed for the salvation of humankind. Jesus came into this world and declared, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he also declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I know of no other person who has made this declaration. Some people will claim and say they are Jesus. Some people will claim that they are like. Some people will claim that they have a way. But... Nobody claims that he or she will die for humankind. But Jesus said so, and he did so, because God sent him to do so. And by his death and resurrection, we have received this redemption and 
this eternal life and eternal blessing. Glory be to God who loves us and has given us his son, Jesus Christ. As the scriptures say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I want to quickly share my screen and so we can take a summary of the message we have treated. Okay, the redeemed of the law. This is bringing it together. And we want to show what I, by the grace of God, have put together, which I call the redemption model. And so we've gone through a lot of teaching. Day one, which was Sunday, the 19th, we took the overview of the topic, the redeemed of the law. On Monday, we went into dealing with the issues of sin. On Tuesday, dealing with the power of darkness. On Wednesday, we went into the everlasting covenant. Glory be to God. And then we went from there to the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And we went from the kingdom of God to the sacrifice, the offering and sacrifice. And then we went from there into reflection on what this really mean to us and the lessons we have learned, what we have taken individually, focusing on the benefits that was on Saturday. And here we are today to put it, pull it all together and then minister to ourselves. And the Lord has been helping us throughout these uh, seven days, today being the eighth day. So to summarize, through Jesus Christ, God has dealt with sin and power of Satan over humankind and therefore restored humankind to himself. I will make that categorical statement again. Boldly, I say that through Jesus Christ, God has dealt with sin and power of Satan over humankind and therefore restored humankind to himself, to God, the creator of the universe, the creator of the sun, the moon, the stars, the creator of all humankind, the one who owns the breath that is in you, that is in me. At least nobody will say he created himself. People can claim whatever theory they want to create, how they came into the world. But one thing they cannot claim is that they created themselves. Not even the devil can claim that. Glory be to God. So the breath that is in you, that is in me, God put it in us. And so God who has created us has dealt with the issue of sin and the power of Satan over humankind. And therefore, has restored humankind to himself. All who receive Jesus Christ are the redeemed of the Lord, and they are the beneficiaries of this provision of God. Glory be to God. Satan brought sin into the world, and sin brought death, accompanying with death are all the other evils that have come into the world. Sickness and disease, curse and poverty on all forms of evils, wickedness. How did this happen? Satan deceived Adam, the first man God created and gave the authority, the right, the power over the earth. For God in Genesis chapter 2, or Genesis chapter 1, rather say, the Bible says, and God made them, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion. So Satan deceived Adam by trick, trickery, to sin, but Jesus Christ, whom God sent, defeated Satan by obedience to God and restored humankind to righteousness. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. By the law of input and output, 
Satan and sin are they imputed to the world. And the output, therefore, of that sin is death and the accompanying evil, sickness, disease, curse, poverty, and all the woes and wickedness. So once the issue of sin and power of Satan have been dealt with, as I have already said, that God has dealt with the issue of sin and the power of Satan over humankind. God has destroyed it through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. So by the law of impute and output, once that imputes have been dealt with, have been removed, then the output is non-existent. Hallelujah. Once the issue of sin and power of Satan have been dealt with, death, sickness, disease, curse, poverty, and other evils have been cured. God has cured us, humankind, of the outcome of sin and the power of Satan because he has dealt with sin and the power of Satan through Jesus Christ. The law of input and output holds and applies. It's only left then for you and I to believe and exercise our faith in God and in his son Jesus Christ by his word and receive this blessing. So, this blessing, therefore, is only available to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who came to this world and died for us at Calvary and shed his blood, the blood of the everlasting covenant. Glory be to God. So pulling all this together is this diagram I put together. God, creator of the heaven and earth and all that are in them. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world's and they that dwell therein. Glory be to God. But say, and God created the world. So beneath here is the world with humankind represented there. But Satan came and deceived Adam, who was the first man in the Garden of Eden. Through Adam's sin entered the world, and the result, output of sin, as we have said, are listed here. Sickness, disease, oppression, poverty, wickedness, etc and eventually death. Death spiritually, which is eternal separation from God, and death physically, because God has condemned the world through the disobedience of Adam. And God has promised to restore mankind to himself and then give mankind a new world, devoid of this evil, as you could see here on the right-hand side. We will come to that. How did God achieve that? God made a promise to Abraham by a covenant, the covenant that God made with Abraham and said uh, by his seed, from his seed, shall the whole families of the earth be blessed. Shall the whole humankind be blessed, be restored, be saved. And Jesus Christ, God at the right time, appointed time, sent Jesus Christ, as you could see here. And Jesus Christ came to establish righteousness. And through his righteousness, Holiness, health, healing, deliverance, freedom from the power of Satan, from the power of sin, prosperity, which is also deliverance from curse, the curse that was placed upon the earth, jo love, joy, peace, 
of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and power and the fruit, eternal life, ultimately, glory be to God, has now come to humankind. Praise the name of the Lord. We touched on three key laws that are applicable that we must know, and there are other laws. And you see, God himself operates by principles. And if we can understand these principles as they are in the word of God and practice them, we will get the results. We look at law number one, the law of servitude, the law of servitude. The law of servitude says, to whom you yield yourself, servant to obey, his servant you become. This is the law that operates upon the addicts. Addicts, you yield yourself to drugs, you become servant to drugs. It operates in people who are obsessed with money, materialism. That's why even people who ought to be uh, people that we look up to, role models in all levels, when they get obsessed by money, by materialism, by power, whatever they get obsessed with, they are suffering from the law of servitude. Whatever you yield yourself, servant to obey, his servant you become. This is the law that the devil used to trick Adam and take authority or receive authority. So the devil doesn't have power. God gave power upon this earth to Adam. The authority to rule, to dominate this world, gave it to Adam and the seed of Adam, which are a humankind. But the devil tricked Adam and brought sin. And all humankind that are born into the lineage of Adam, which is every human being, is a sinner and therefore subject to the authority of the devil. That's how Satan rules in this world, by the law of servitude. And that's why this arrow comes, sin, and then returns. So you could see everyone that sins is of the devil. Romans chapter 6, verse 16, the law of servitude. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, whoever sins is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. I know there are people who will say, I am not a sinner. I don't have devil over me. Okay. You just keep going on till I discuss the right-hand side. And I will beg you to cross over from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So law two, the law of impute and output, which we've already addressed. Because sin has come, the outcome is death. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that brings us to the right-hand side. As I've already said, God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, who came and defeated the devil, by living a righteous life, sinless life, and he gave himself to die for humankind. And through his righteousness, holiness, health, healing, deliverance, freedom, prosperity, love, joy, peace, the Holy Spirit of God and eternal life has been sent to humankind. And this is operating by the law of substitution, the law of substitution. Jesus died on the cross and took our place. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So, brothers and sisters, everyone, therefore, who received Jesus, Jesus takes your place. He removes the sin. He, he gives to you the freedom from the power of Satan because he has offered himself as a ransom for you and me. Ransom for the sins that Adam committed, ransom to settle and destroy the power of Satan totally, completely, and we have been delivered. The Bible says in Colossians 
chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, 13 specifically, said he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has conveyed us to the kingdom of the son of his love. And so that brings us to this point here. To the left, therefore, you have the kingdom of darkness, all those who are still under sin, in the Adamic nature and responding to Satan. And on the right hand, the kingdom of God, as I've just quoted, those who give their lives to Jesus and live and walk in righteousness and respond to Jesus Christ and to God. Glory be to God. So brothers and sisters, if you have come to Jesus Christ, know this, that though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We have been translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God ruled over us. Jesus Christ is our king. And all these blessings, these provisions, the power and the provisions of the redeemed is your portion, is my portion. Holiness is your portion. Righteousness of God is your portion. Health and healing is your portion. You have been delivered from the power of darkness. You have been freed from sin. And God has forgiven all our sins, iniquities, transgressions, errors, and mistakes. Prosperity is your portion. God has delivered and redeemed you and I from the curse that was placed upon Adam and human race. God has given us his Holy Spirit to manifest the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of love, joy, peace, to have joy and peace in our life. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He said, my peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. He said, in the world you will have tribulations, but in me you will have peace. He said, be of good cheer, be of good courage, for I have overcome the world, and we have eternal life. As it's written in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. He that does not have the son of God does not have life. Glory be to God. We have eternal life. And though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We belong to God. We belong to Jesus Christ. And all the blessings of the redeemed is our portion. So brothers and sisters, know your rights. Know the power and provisions of God for you as the redeemed of the Lord. And begin to exercise and live in that life now. To the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. Let's look at John chapter 15, verse 19. John chapter 15, verse 19 to buttress that point, because that's the key message. Though we are in the world, we are not of the world. John chapter 15, let's look at verse 19. John chapter 15, verse 19. What does the Bible say? Jesus was speaking here. He said, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I choose you out of the world, Therefore, the world hates you. I choose you out of the world. Jesus has chosen you. Everyone that comes to him, he has chosen. And he takes, translates out of the kingdom of darkness, out of the world, into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, where all those good blessings prevail. In this world, there will continue to be tribulation and wars as long as the devil still uses the law of servitude to rule and dominate mankind. Would you come out to be free? In John chapter 17, 14 to 16, John 17, we we'll read. Jesus spoke here again. He said, I have given them your word. This is the word of God, brothers and sisters. As you have heard today, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon 
the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we should receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. I continue to read John chapter 17, verse 15. He said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. You see why we are seeing here. But that you should keep them from the evil one, the devil. They are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. 17, let me add that. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Glory be to God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Glory be to God. I want us to look at Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Let's start reading from verse 13. He said, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. 14. Having wiped out, wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. 15. Having disarmed, he disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Glory be to God. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have been lifted to sit with him in heavenly places. And God has provided for us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places as you have seen listed. I will just take two more scriptures. Ephesians, let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. He said, blessed be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Every, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Come into Jesus Christ. All the blessings that are listed there for those who are in Christ. Though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We belong to another kingdom that is here in the world with us, but we are not of the world. Glory be to God. We belong to the kingdom of God. We belong to the kingdom of Christ. Glory be to God. In Ephesians, that's in Ephesians 2, 6, he said, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, emphasizing that same point we made last scripture, and then we pray. First Peter, or rather Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Second Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. As his divine power has given to us, divine power, oh, we have the divine power with us. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Divine power. Divine nature. It is in you. It is in me. I will read all the way to verse 5. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Glory be to God. I want to pray right now. Because I feel charged right now. This provision is available for you, for me. How would you miss it? How dare you miss it? 
Jesus has become your substitute. He has become my substitute to have all these blessings of God, to receive this divine nature. So I want to start praying for those who want to receive Jesus to their lives. I mean, into their lives. If you heard this word, wherever you are connected, and you say, I am still struggling with sin. Even if you have said, I confess Jesus as my Lord, and you are still in sin. As you have heard, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, whoever sins is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. You want to break from that power of oppression. Or maybe you are addicted to something. You have been struggling. Just like the Spirit of God led me to mention those addictions. Addicted to whatever, sex, drugs, uh, even power. You're drunk with power, money. You're drunk with materialism. You have to be delivered. And so right now, give your life to Jesus. Or you have never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Right now, make up your mind. Jesus said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Because today, your deliverance and your salvation, the salvation that the Almighty God has given to you, has come to you. Open your mouth and now tell him, say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that you have given to me and all humankind. Right now, Lord, I receive your gift. I accept your gift. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. And I say, sin, get away from me. I reject you, sin. I reject Satan, the author of sin and all evil. I reject the world. I embrace Jesus. From now, Lord, wash me with the precious blood of Jesus and give me your Holy Spirit, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit of God change my life, change my heart, transform me into the glorious image of the sons and daughters of God. Thank you, Almighty God, for saving my life, for redeeming me. To you, Almighty God, be all glory. To you, Jesus, be all thanks. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Say that in Jesus' mighty name. I have prayed, and in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And I agree with you that heaven honor your prayer. Jesus has already said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So it is done for you in the name of Jesus. Number two, we are now going to pray for deliverance. Whatever oppression is operating in your life right now must cease. Because Jesus has destroyed the devil and the works of the devil and has given me, given you who have come to Jesus Christ, the authority to cast out the devil. I'm going to read those two scriptures so you may uh, understand. First, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Let me illustrate it from verse 17, first of all. Here, Jesus Christ sent out the 70, 70. It was not the 12, so you would not say, look at verse 1 of uh, Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others, also 70 others, and sent them two by two before his face into city and place where he himself was about to go. Now come to verse 17. So they went out, verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Whoever Jesus sent to go, demons are subject to him, subject to her. And when they say that, here verse 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then he came to Mark chapter 16, from verse 16. He said, he who believes 
and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. 17. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And I said, chapter 53, verse 5, said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed look at it he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquity he was the chastisement of our peace was upon him but when he came to healing he said by his stripes we are healed continue we are here present Continue. We are here. It is present every time you are here. Right now, raise your hand to heaven. If you're oppressed by the devil in any way, whatever form of oppression, addiction, depression, evil dreams that torment you, failure, disappointment, at the time of breakthrough, even the curse of poverty, Whatever it is, raise your two hands to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the redemption of the blood of Jesus, the power of the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I receive my deliverance right now from the power of darkness. I reject Satan. I reject every work of the devil. In the name of Jesus, the Heavenly Father, thank you for breaking the yoke of the devil over my life. According to Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, thank you for breaking the yoke, the bondage of the devil over my life right now. Satan, get behind me. Get out of my life. In the name of Jesus, demons, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I cast you out of my life. I cast you out of my business. I cast you out of everything that concerns me, out of my ministry, out of my family. You have no right. You have no power over me. Christ has redeemed me. Christ has delivered me. Christ has become a substitute for me right now. Lord Jesus, I receive your blessing. I receive your deliverance. I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I receive all the blessings of God for the redeemed. For I have been redeemed. Thank you, Almighty God, for redeeming me, for saving me, for delivering me. And to you, O oh God, be all glory. In the name of Jesus. Tell him, say, Heavenly Father. With these hands raised to you, O oh God, let this hand remain raised as holy, righteous hand for you forever. Throughout my life here on earth, I will serve you. I will live for you by the power of your spirit. Give me the grace. Give me the strength. Give me your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Holy Spirit of God, empower me now to do the will of God, to please the Father Almighty, to please my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, from now on, take over, take over every battle of my life. Take over, take over. Now the man of war, the man of war, take over, take over, take over every battle of my life, every second, every minute, every day, every hour. Take over in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's add the healing as well as say, Heavenly Father, heal me now. By the stripes of Jesus, I confess. I declare and I believe that I am healed. Every symptom in my body go now. Be cut off now, for your root has been destroyed. Jesus has healed me by the stripes of Jesus. God has healed me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for healing me. I am well. I am made whole in the name of Jesus.
Go ahead now and pray for all your needs. Pray for all your needs. According to the areas that we have dealt with, pray for all your needs. Still keep those two hands up and pray for whatever are the needs in your life. Yesterday, as part of our reflection, we say put down your own seven key areas of blessing that the, redeem, the redemption of God has brought to you as the redeemed of the Most High God. Present your prayer before God now. Present them before the Lord. Present them before the Lord. Present them before the Lord. As we bring this prayer session to a close. Because it is done. It is not by might. It is not by power. But by my spirit says the Lord. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit says the Lord. I want to pray for you now. And I stand upon the scripture. In Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. Which says whatever we agree shall be done. And I stand upon the authority that is vested in me as a redeemed of the most high God and a son of the living God who has been translated into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the son of his love, Jesus Christ, with the authority, the kingdom authority, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast out every devil, oppressing your life, and I terminate that oppression from your life. I command it to cease now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus and by the stripes of Jesus, receive your healing now. The hand of the Lord be upon you and the hand of the Lord be upon and against, be, be against your enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. The everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus be activated upon your life. Every curse be, be broken, be removed by that everlasting covenant. And now the blessing of the redeemed of the Lord, even as we have enumerated them today, health, healing, the prosperity of the Lord, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the blessing of eternal life, the blessing of God's love, God's joy, God's peace, God's protection, God's promotion be upon you and your entire household now and all through the days of your life here on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the church of Jesus Christ say, be amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I want to spend the remaining minutes that we have to take testimonies, testimonies, and whatever you have to share, because I know it has been a wonderful seven days, and today the eighth day, so it has been a wonderful eight days. So, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. It's been an eventful week. Every day, every time, I have encountered so many blessings, so many challenges, and all of them, God gave me victory. Amen. The one I am singing today is the one of today. Please, my sisters and brother, be very careful. The devil is as crafty as he used to be. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that yesterday that I did not sit to conclude the last prayer we have always done? Yes. Um, by the time I came to sleep, I slept there. Before I could wake up, the, like the time I normally get up to study, I felt as if my head was full with stones. Mm -hmm. And what came, why, why? I started that feeling of blaming myself. I, I didn't plan well. That was why I could have given all the testimony mm. that God has blessed me with. That mm. I've seen healing, I've seen counseling, I've seen everything. Mm. Other than me staying, I, uh, I didn't plan well. I, so that wanted to weigh me down. Then I quickly jumped out from my bed. I said, uh-uh, 
of all the blessing I have enjoyed for this week, why do I allow this issue to become problem to the point of wanting me to feel bad? Mm. So as I was trying to meditate on all the blessing, especially what my sister Gertrude said, I produce fruits, all that we you said, and I am redeemed, the freedom, all the things. I say, I can, then this song quickly came to my mind. Let the redeem of the Lord. I sang that song. I became so happy, so filled with the spirit of God. I that trickish. I I think that was what I wanted to read. Um, uh, is it Second Corinthians chapter eleven verse three that says, um, "But I fear lest somehow." As mm -hmm. the serpent deceive if mm -hmm. by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted mm -hmm. from the simplicity that mm -hmm. is in Christ. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Powerful. It, it runs away like 440. Powerful. That is just Glory be to God. So please, my dear, let us be alert. Let Satan not take the, our joy. Let it not take our re deliverance, our redemption. So let the redeem of the Lord say so. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Many more testimony. Oh, feel free to add. Okay. All right. Feel free to and add, but just make it. Give chance to others so that. Great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. You've mentioned a lot. You've talked about healing, deliverance. And now, just again to remind us, during the reflection yesterday, you remember this was the discussion we had. <clears throat> that the law of servitude is what the devil uses to get permission to weigh people down, even believers. And we ask the question, in what ways do we unconsciously submit to the devil's tricks? You remember? And we talk about ignorance. How do you overcome ignorance? Investing in studying the word of God. Talk about disobedience, which is sin. And when the spirit tells you, wake up to pray, pray. Just be guided by the spirit. And as our sister was talking about, talking, I remember, to add something, self-condemnation, self-condemnation. The devil uses that at a lot. Never condemn yourself. You have been redeemed, you have been redeemed. First John chapter two. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Can you see that? If anyone sins, you repent because you have a father. You don't walk out of your father. You don't walk out of Jesus Christ, you repent. As I shared with us yesterday, praise the Lord. Because it's, it says little children. So you're already a child. This is different from sinners. This is for the children. We have an advocate who advocates for us, Jesus Christ. But peradventure, one sins. Remember to repent. To Self-condemnation is the trick of the devil. So we thank God for that victory, my sister. God bless you. So let's take more testimonies. And it's important to give some of this perspective as well, because this is what it is. It is about the life that we will live with this uh, word of God, this knowledge that we have been armed with, this blessing we have been given. Okay, next person, please. Yes, Sister Gertrude. Yes, I want to thank God so much for this afternoon. The program we've had for this past one week has been a blessing. Not that this is the first time I'm fast, but I have been so much blessed because I do not always stay away from food, but pastor, you remind us to pray and you give us prayer points. And this has helped me a lot. So I've been so much blessed. And what I will leave with all of us is the fact that we are redeemed. And we are not of this world, though we are still in the world. So that encourages me a lot, that we are not of this world, though we are in the world, because the Lord has redeemed us. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Please, next person. So I put the redemption model back again, just to let it stick. And as our sister re-echoed, though we are in the world, we are not of the world. The things of this world must not affect us the way it affects us. Though we are in the world, we are not of the world. And I say the things that plague the world must not plague us the way it plagues others. You are of God, little children. First John chapter 4, verse 4. And have overcome them. You have overcome them. You have overcome the things of this world. Because he who is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Because he who is in you, because he who is in me, is greater than he who is in the world. I want us to use this to pray. Remember, our theme for this year remains greater victory. And it is this kind of knowledge, teaching, and the world that arms us to continue to enjoy that greater victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our theme for this month remains the month of results. We we'll say September is the month of result. You have to have that result. And the rest of your life, we must bear fruit. And our fruit must abide. The fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of our labor, The fruit in all areas and aspects of life. So know your rights, brothers and sisters. The power and provisions of God for you as a redeemed of the law. And live thereby. I want to encourage us to exercise our faith and take witnessing, evangelism, preaching Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind, seriously. Let's raise our voices to heaven now and tell him, Heavenly Father, by reason of this word, this teaching that I have heard, in this year, 2021, let my victory, oh God, be greater. Let me have victory, greater victory in every aspect and area of life. As the redeemed of the Lord, Father, grant me victory. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, you are my victory. And I ask that you go before me in every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, all through this year and for the rest of my life. Give me victory, greater victory. Let my victory be enlarged as the day goes by, as the day goes by. Heavenly Father, by your spirit, Help me to do your will. Let my life glorify you. All the days of my life here on earth, help me to do your will. Let my life glorify you. Say, Father, let the fullness of Christ that you have ordained for me be established in my life and be fulfilled. Now, tell him, Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Open my ears to hear you. Open my mind to understand what you are speaking to me. Open my eyes to see that which you are showing me. Reveal Jesus to me and in me. Reveal Jesus through me. Reveal the mind of God and the mind of Christ in me and through me. Thank you, Almighty God. For all these blessings you have blessed me with as a redeemed of the Lord. To you, your glory, honor, power, majesty forever. In Jesus' mighty name. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we'll close. And remember, Wednesday, 6 p.m., we will connect to pray. And also, please, don't discard the daily prayer. Compile those prayers 
point together and pray them for yourself. Forgive me if I'm taking time again. I can't emphasize enough. I grew up with sports. I do sports and, you know, so there are principles that you learn, particularly in table tennis. I want to talk about that one, just to remind us. Table tennis is a service game. You serve and then you attack or defend. Most people, their weapons is in the service. But whatever you can do that your opponent cannot return, that gives you point, keeps you ahead, you do it. But what I have found people do in life, that's why I talk about principles of life. They will know something that is working for them. Then they get tired of it and they will change. So in this table turn, if you can serve one service and your opponent cannot return, you serve it till you get the whole point. So when you pray and you're seeing result, like I have seen myself too, things that have happened in my life, some visions that I have received specifically, some I can't share yet during this period, they are amazing. And so don't stop praying those prayer points. Put them together. Make them your personal prayer points and be praying them. Study those words. I've also told us you must have scriptures, sets of scriptures that are a reality in your life. It's not even about opening the Bible to read or somebody tells you it has become your life. Compile those prayers, prayer points. Rather, and be praying them repeatedly for yourself. Just like that table tennis player that will serve one service that the opponent cannot return till he gets all the points. This is how we operate and have victory. And the Holy Spirit will continue to give us revelation of the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bye-bye, and God bless you. Oh, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. You will see the mighty manifestation of God in your life this week or through this month or through this year in Jesus' name.